with filtering see filtering you can do it in um, two ways okay so you can go with what is filtering filtering means you are limiting the traffic for specific port or a specific protocol or specific ip range or uh, how you want to allow the connection so filtering means how you want the traffic to flow or how you want the traffic i mean it is about traffic limitation okay limiting the traffic simple as that we already mentioned it so filtering can be done in many ways in azure platform we used to have something called network access control list in classic azure model so in asm model we used to have this NACL, which is used at the subnet level but uh, this is not at all uh, needed anymore so it used to be exist but still in aws we have uh, the network access control list which is used for the subnet level and then we have uh, something called uh, um, security group which is used for uh, the individual system level okay so this is still there in uh, aws but uh, it used to be there in azure uh, when we had the old uh, azure model the classic uh, asm model okay but still it is there in uh, aws cloud so now what we have we have got network security group in azure that is the filtering mechanism which is used at the subnet level as well as at the network card level or the vm level or whatever it is you say for each and every device you can limit the traffic using network security group there is one more concept called application security group i'll explain that how application security group work you can group the systems by the application role like web server database server and uh, in mean, uh, middleware or uh, um, application or and, and you can fill group them by the role and you can filter the traffic i'll show you the demo on how that works but in aws we have uh, something called security group which is the filtering at the nic level or the vm level or they call it as instance level right uh, vm is called as ec2 instance in Azure, in aws so they call this call security group is a firewall it's a firewall for uh, instance okay so for filtering you need a firewall right so that is the understanding for everyone right if you want to filter something or if you want to block some traffic we need a firewall so these stuffs whichever we are listing here these are all virtual firewall concept okay they are all virtual firewall which will help us to uh, block the traffic or limit the traffic so this is the way we go and filter it so network security group it will have what it will have it will have security rules that will define or that will decide which traffic to be allowed or which traffic to be denied okay so it, it gives you an option to go and allow the traffic or deny the traffic so this can be used both for inbound traffic nothing but uh, they call it as in cloud uh, they call it as uh, ingress in some of the cloud ingress means inbound traffic which are coming incoming traffic okay incoming traffic to that system or to the database or uh, to that service okay outbound traffic can also be filtered which is called egress egress is outbound outgoing traffic from your system okay you can limit the traffic both incoming and outgoing using network security group so network security group you'll go and create multiple rules that will decide whether you are allowing the traffic or whether you are denying the traffic so the very important thing that you decide is the priority number so if i go and look at the priority number in my um, azure platform see by default you will have network security groups created network security groups so see there are many network security groups that has got created for each and every machine so that should not be the ideal way of creating things so you should group the systems based on the role or based on the environment and you should have a common security group as much as possible you should not keep on creating a network security group uh, for each of the machine so i showed you right when you go and create a machine 
it goes and creates a separate vnet separate network security group separate network card and all those things so if you want to group them together and limit the number of security groups you should try and do that okay see for example we created uh, these things right the prod vm and the test vm and so on so this prod uh, vm network security group it has got two categories of settings inbound security rule and outbound security rule so what is the inbound security rule has got see it has got some uh, numbers which are 65000 and above so 65000 and above these are defined by microsoft as a default rule okay so network security group which will have security rules and there are some default security rules which are predefined in the cloud by microsoft this pre predefined security rules it starts with 65000 and it goes up to 65500 or whatever okay and above so you can have only up to 65535 okay so that is the general number we see and uh, wait just a second okay so this is the default predefined rule and uh, we also have uh, user defined rule okay user defined rule is something you create so you can create it uh, with a lesser number okay you can create it with 300 or 200 or whatever number you want to create you can uh, create it uh, lesser than um, what they have got so you can maybe like mostly people use it use the number from 100 to 4096 this is the number we generally use to avoid any conflict for user defined security rules so rules if you ask me like how the rules are being processed so whichever has the lowest number will take the highest precedence so the rule number with lowest value will have highest precedence so what does that mean so if i have a rule with, with number 200 which says hello and if i have a rule number with uh, 1000 which says deny then uh, the rule number with uh, uh, lowest priority will take precedence okay so it is the, it is how it works don't go and uh, confuse with permission concept like in permission allo will uh, so deny will override allo and all those things they don't uh, get confused with permission and security rules okay permission is different um, the security rule is different okay so here in security rule whichever uh, number which is having the lower value the lower number will have highest precedent and the lower number will be processed before the higher number okay so higher lower number has highest precedence simple as that lower numbers have higher priority okay as a result so if uh, any rule that exists with lower priorities uh you have to have the higher number for that okay so uh, let me paste what i copied from uh, the security rule i copied the definition from there right network security rules are evaluated by priority using the combination of source source port okay that is all fine okay so you cannot have duplicate numbers okay so uh, just understand that you cannot have um, the same priority number and direction on as an existing rule so you have to create a separate uh, number for each of the rule i'll show you how to do that see if i want to specifically allow um, 80 80 i mean http traffic for this production virtual machine then i need to go and add a new sub security rule and i have to mention from where i can allow so we have to select from which source i need to allow the traffic so here the sources you can give any any means anyone in the internet okay anyone in the internet internet includes anyone outside of your network so anyone can access your system so that is any so mostly like we should not open the system for any unless your uh, application or your web server is intended to provide traffic for the entire global uh, public okay if your service is for entire general public then you can allow it if you are if you don't want to allow the traffic for general public then you should never give uh, sources any so how do i restrict it you need to give 
the specific uh, IP address range. For example, if you have uh, your users working from um, a specific IP range, for example, if they are sitting in 10.0.0.8, you need to give that specific IP address range. It can be one single IP address or it can be a complete CIDR range. Okay, so if I say uh, 10.0.0.32, which means it is only one IP address. So you know, right? So that's what we, I was explaining this morning. So uh, uh, that slash 32 means one IP address. So I'm having only one IP address here. Okay, so if I'm saying slash eight, which means or slash 16 means there are 65,000 IP addresses that can connect to my system. So I can go and give a range of IP address. Then I can also give my IP address alone. Sometimes I want to allow myself to connect to a database server or to an application server for doing some troubleshooting or uh, doing some activities. You can also allow your IP address. Your IP address means whichever IP address you are connected to public cloud. For example, if I say my IP address, it will automatically pick up my IP address from the system. So what's my IP? So I'm connected using this IP address. So it will automatically allow this IP address to access this particular system. So that is my IP address. My IP address means my home network or the machine that I am connected from. So you can give an IP address or a range of IP address. Or you can also give my IP address, which is the user's uh, system IP address. Okay, if he is connected from office, it is office address. If he is connected from home, it is home address. The next one is, the service tag. See, for example, if I want to allow um, I, uh, my server to connect to a particular uh, database, Azure database yeah. is a service. Go ahead, go ahead. If there is a question, yeah, yeah interrupt. Yeah, uh, in the IP address, uh, hmm. uh, source IP address, can we define multiple uh, CIDR values? Yeah, yeah, you can give uh, multiple ranges here. So if I just say, IP addresses. So it says uh, IP addresses, right? So you can just say, I can um, give, see, that's what they are giving, right? So 10.0.0.0 slash .0 .0 eight. And let's try to give uh, a comma here and then try to give something. So it says uh, use semicolon. And uh, let's see. So I can create multiple roles. Okay, just a second. It says in an on the record. Okay, it says it cannot be empty. And let me say 10 dot or like 192, 168, 100.0. Okay, it says a small function range. See, generally we'll give a, a bigger range. See, for example, if I have this one, it's a bigger range. I can go and create one more rule, but there should be an option. Let me check. I, I'm not sure if it is the comma separated value or uh, uh, it should be separated by um, semicolon, but I can uh, check that. Okay, so, but it is allowed actually. You can, uh, you should be able to give a larger yeah. range or you should be able to give uh, a comma separated value. So I've, I've seen that, but let me check. Okay, I see yes, someone. Yes, I texted you. Yeah. Yeah. Let it's me defined my again. network like this. Ah, okay. So yeah, it's, it accepts it. Yeah, see, it, it has accepted it. So what we have to give is, we have to, um, ah, okay. So you should not give any space. That is the important thing. Okay, so it, it accepts comma separated value. So you can allow the complete range like this. Yeah. After comma, we should not use space, you're saying? Correct, yeah. Okay. So you can see that we have given a larger range. So you can, yeah, you can um, give a range of IP address. That's what I mentioned, right? You can give one IP range or multiple IP ranges. So it should be comma separated and uh, without uh, space. Okay, don't give space, yeah. So service tag means we are allowing a specific service. For example, I want my web server to connect to database, Azure database or Azure uh, um, Cosmos database or uh, Azure storage. So those are all uh, service tag. So see example, a network load balancer. I want to allow load balancer only to connect to my system. I want only uh, the internet service tag to connect to my system. So I can go and define which service uh, from which region I want to allow. See, for example, load balancer is a service. Traffic manager is a service. Uh, storage is a service. Database is a service. I'm talking about the service that are offered by Microsoft. See, I'm talking about Azure database. Okay, this one. 
I'm talking about Azure storage this service which is a Azure uh, service here Okay, so you can limit the traffic from a specific service tag also then comes the next option which is application security group. I'll explain about the application security group. So it is very simple. Uh, what we generally do is when we go and create a VM, okay, we go and group them into uh, a, a kind of tiering. Okay, we'll call uh, the front tier as web tier and then the internal, uh, the in-between is application tier, nothing but business tier. This is where your business applications are hosted and we'll have data tier, right? So when you go and create the virtual machine, you will group them into a concept called application security group i'll show you that okay and i'll show you a demo on that okay no worries i'll explain that with a demo so you can group the ser server application servers by the role of the application or by the uh, web uh, web application and uh, database roles i'll show you that so you can also have an application security group which is a very useful uh, concept see for example uh, let's take i have a set of database servers on the back end okay i've got database server one database server two and a database server three so in this concept i can say this is grouped together into a database application security group and i've got database vm1 and similarly db vm2 and so on okay so what i can do is i can just say i can allow only the systems that are connected to application security group and similarly i can just say this particular application security group should be allowed to be connected only from the systems that are connected to web security group this is how generally we'll have it okay we'll have uh, the front end tier back end tier we'll have uh, only connections allowed from these systems see I, this is how uh, in general we'll have in the environment so we'll have a web tier we'll have um, an app tier and we'll have a database tier and again if you have some terminal server or bastion server we'll have that here okay so we'll have a bastion subnet or a bastion um, asg and we'll have a web systems web tier or web subnet and that will be grouped into a web application security group similarly your application subnet systems will be or they call it as application tier or business tier so it will be grouped into app or like we'll say business uh, asg business means you are running business application there okay and you will also have database subnet with database asg so on the database server you will have a rule that will say i should only allow connection from the business uh, asg uh, group of systems which means only these application server can connect to this system so that is the best practice i'll show a demo on that shortly okay so that is the last category which is mostly used category also in production system so now so we talked about priority we talked about source we'll talk about the destination or the port protocol and all those things right so i think port most of you understand port is nothing but you are um, let me just say port range okay which port range i need to allow from the source okay i can if i say asterisk all the port ranges will be allowed or if i want to limit the traffic limit the source port like uh, 80 port or 1024 port or whatever i can also limit that okay again you have to use the comma separated uh, value to allow a uh, range of uh, port numbers for example 80 comma 1024 up to uh, 65000 so you will get to understand this from the application team application team will have the uh, port requirements like which port they need to allow for their application traffic and all those things so you have to go and allow that specific port see whenever you go and fill a firewall uh, sheet or a firewall rule you will give all the details right which source IP should be allowed to connect to which destination IP and which port number, which protocol TCP or UDP or whatever, whether I should allow incoming traffic or outgoing traffic. So this is how generally we go and fill the security rule in uh, even in your on-premises. So the application team will tell us or the uh, vendor who is providing that application will tell us what port I need to allow for uh, that particular application. See for example, okay, let me just check here. I have some example. Okay. 
so for example let's say web 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 server okay web server should be allowed to access by http or https if it is uh, ssl enabled similarly if you are having some database server based on the database server uh, port number we need to allow that particular port number so we need to allow the specific port and then if it is tcp or udp we can just give that particular uh, protocol here okay so protocol is the icmp is for packets right or the ping ping uh, packets packet internet gopher or they call it as ping in short so protocol you have tcp udp icmp and all so you can also allow this particular um, uh, protocol also see whenever i go and select a particular port number it will automatically check the uh, change the uh, rule here if i'm saying http it will automatically change to 80 if i want to allow microsoft mysql it is 3306 and similarly if i want to allow postgres it is 5432 so there is a automatic list here so it allows almost all the services that are there all the popular services okay so service is nothing but the service name okay i cannot just uh, limit it say for example uh, http uh, ssh mysql so these are all uh, service name okay so you have plenty of them so in a security group rule you go and define all these things and you go and select the action whether you want to uh, allow or uh, deny okay whether you want to allow the traffic or uh, deny the traffic sorry so this is what we generally go and uh, fill in a particular security group role right most of you if you have worked on uh, uh, creating a security group or uh, sec uh, firewall uh, service request you might have already known this okay so action is either you want to allow the traffic or you want to create a rule which where you want to deny the traffic so this is how uh, you go and uh, do it so generally as a best practice you need to use maximum you have to use the service tag if you are allowing some azure related services or use the application security group as much as possible and you need to limit the traffic only to uh, specific uh, limited ip range you should not give uh, open your service for the wide range of ip address that is the best practice okay so uh, any questions so far on this particular thing stan this uh, yeah. service stacks what you're saying does mm -hmm. they have these ports define uh, those are fixed like are we uh, they they might be changing service tag is different service port number is different okay service tag is actually they have see if you uh, ask me uh, what is the range of ip address for uh, azure storage you can go and find it in the internet azure public ip address range okay so microsoft gives you the complete documentation about their ip address range i can just give you i know like uh, you are you are uh, you asked the question um, um, about the service but then I, I have to clarify this understanding for you okay when i say service tag i'm talking about azure storage azure database and all those stuff right so let me okay it is opening up in um, visual studio code because it is a json file see if you look at here Microsoft has already predefined. You can also open it in Notepad itself. It is very straightforward. Okay, it's not that you need to open it in um, uh, Visual Studio Code. Since I had Visual Studio Code, it did open up there. Okay, let me show you. I can just open this file. Open, open in um, Notepad++ or uh, Notepad, whatever uh, you have in your machine okay so it will have all the details predefined so for your question okay let me minimize these things or let me minimize all the okay that's a good question in fact see for example um, um if you ask me okay so let me search for something okay if you ask me azure storage okay so they already have a predefined ip range for azure storage okay so they already have this predefined range so indirectly if you are allowing azure storage it is allowing all these ip addresses which is pertaining to azure storage similarly they will have an ip range for database so it is not tied to port number okay it is tied to a range of ip addresses which microsoft is hosting their backend service oh. Okay, even if you want to understand, for example, I want to understand what is the IP range that uh, Microsoft is using for South India, I can just search for South India and I'll be able to find out 
what is the IP range uh, that that they are using for uh, uh, our, their South India data center? See, they can okay. you can see the IP range for uh, app service. App services management, Azure Arc infrastructure, and all those things. Okay, you, it is a very big list. Okay, it has got uh, um, yeah. close to a lack of uh, line <laughs> items here. Okay, but just to answer your question, it is all predefined, yeah. and uh, we don't have to worry about it. Okay. okay, but you can also download it in the, in the internet. It is available in the internet if you want to allow. For example, someone uh, from your on-premises team, if the firewall team asks you what is the range of IP address for Azure storage, you can uh, give that file to them. Okay, they can uh, allow that particular IP range. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so incoming and outgoing. Outgoing means outgoing uh, traffic from um, the system to the outbound. It is outbound traffic. Outgoing is outbound traffic. So now let's do one thing. Let's go and create a sample here. So yesterday we created a network, um, virtual network, right? We created a virtual network yesterday. We created this November, okay? And I have got some systems already pre-existing, but I don't know where exactly they are sitting. So this TAN web server is sitting in which virtual network? I can go to the networking here and I can find out which network it is part of. This is part of the default network, okay? RG hyphen app East US, okay, perfect. So now, this okay see interesting so this machine is in australia east but the security the virtual network is defined in uh, east us oh, that is all fine okay it, it can accept that combination also so i'll go and do one thing i'll go and create a new virtual machine in the network security in the virtual network which we created yesterday okay i'll um, go and select the one which we created yesterday where exactly network class okay and here I'm going to say web server one. Or I can just say this is November web server one. Okay, I can just go and um, select whatever operating system I want. And then, okay. I can just select, uh, okay, I think uh, two VMs should be fine, two virtual CPUs, okay. So how to automatically install some of the roles or uh, stuff on this particular machine? How do we install some specific roles while we create the VM? Loading extensions. Yeah, extension, very good, okay. So yeah, we can do it using extension or you can also use the bootstrapping option, right? So here you can also limit the traffic here itself on the first basic screen itself, you can allow or deny the specific traffic. For example, I'm intentionally not allowing the HTTP port here and I'm just going ahead and creating it, okay? So here I need to specifically select the traffic for the network, I have to select the Okay, let's assume I, I want to create this web server in the production subnet. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's create that and uh, okay, let's go with the kind of uh, concept, conceptual idea. Okay, I'll create one more uh, network quickly. Okay, we have created this uh, November VNet in East US. So I will create the um, new VNet. I'll go and select the same network class as the resource group. So here I'll give the name as, I'll just say uh, uh, December VNet 01. Okay, and I'm going to create this in South India, Chennai. Maybe I'm not sure if I'm allowed to create a lot of VM there. Maybe possibly I can just, okay, let's try, okay. It's not a harm here. So let's go and select the South India location and let's go and define the IP range here. So yesterday we used 192, 168 range, right? So today we'll use a different range here. So under the IP address, I'll go and delete the default range. I'll go and add a IP address range here. So I'll call it as 172.16. I'll just say 200.0. 
slash 24. I want I want to have 256 addresses. So it says starting IP address is not okay. Prefix is not allowed. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll just have 0, .0 slash. I'll just say 24 should be okay. Oh, it doesn't allow 20. Okay, let me select. Okay, I need to select it instead of typing it there. Um, I'll go for, uh, I'll go for, okay, I think this is fine. 24 is fine. I'll remove the prefix here. Okay, so I want to select 256 addresses. So earlier I used to allow typing it here, but I mean, uh, these days we need to go and select the address space uh, CADR value. Okay, I've just selected it. Now I want to subdivide this address space into smaller subnet. So I can click on this add subnet and I can just say, this is my web uh, subnet and the starting IP address is 172 16 uh, 0 dot 0 and I want to subdivide it using um, how many IP addresses I'll go with maybe uh, 16 IP addresses each okay and then add it okay let me also have a security group defined here so how do we do it along with the system okay let me go and duplicate the screen so i'll go and create the network security group okay i'll just call this network security group as web security group okay create a network security group so you can create everything as an individual uh, stuff okay in azure platform i'll call this as web network security group 01 okay and i'll create it in south india okay perfect next next and then i'll create it Okay, similarly, I want to create one more um, security group for my uh, backend uh, database, just for an example. Okay, database network security group hyphen 01. This I want to create it in South India. Let me review and create it. So now, when I go and create a subnet, I can also attach a network security group for each of those network security group. So how do I do that? Click on this edit button. If you scroll to the bottom, you have the option to go and select the uh, web network security group. Okay, you can also create it here. You have the create new option. You can also create it. You can also go and create it separately. Okay, so similarly, I want to have one more subnet for my um, uh, what do you call the app range of system okay here i will call it as 172.16.0.0 here i have used how much already i've used up to 15 so i have to start with 16 and i can go and choose a smaller subnet for this okay and i can just go and create a new set network security group called web sorry no app network security group 01 okay you can also create a new security group along with the subnet creation it is not that you have to go and create it separately you can also do like this okay the next subnet i'm going to create the database subnet database subnet here the next ip range will be 172 16 16 it is not that it has to be always contiguous you can also give some number uh, which is um, uh, which is uh, you can have an in-between gap but again I, I generally prefer to not do that okay you can select the db security group which you have created okay so now we are done i have given uh, 16 address for my web server 8 address for my app server 4 address for my database server okay now i can go and review and create it
So generally you will have a lot of web server and we'll have only very minimal uh, database server. See, you can go and create uh, IP address range with uh, hundreds and hundreds of IP, but again, that is going to complicate your understanding. Always start with minimum, then go with uh, uh, la larger range so that you understand the concept first. First, understanding the concept is essential. Mm -hmm. uh, you've told that you know the minimum supported uh, subnet is uh, slash 29 right but we have now mm -hmm. created a slash 30 how does it accept interesting question see i told you the minimum supported stuff is slash 29 right yeah you told minimum is slash 29 and maximum is ah. slash 8 so okay. but now we have created one more subnet with slash 30 right 30. Did we create slash 30? Oh, th I don't 29. Think so. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that will not be there. Okay, so it will not be supported, right? Uh, you understand, right? There are uh, uh, five IP addresses that uh, Microsoft needs for uh, their. Uh, um, let me check. Maybe since you have asked, let's wait and uh, verify that. What happened? Did we create it or not? Uh, network. My God. <sighs> Can we check the in the log? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, since I, 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 I missed well, while asking the question, I missed the uh, log here. Okay, I closed that uh, screen also. Okay, let me check. Okay, let me uh, go and quickly do that. I don't know. Okay, let me create quickly. Just give me a second. Any idea what happened? Uh, did uh, some of you noticed uh, what was the error or uh, what went wrong? Okay, I'll quickly do that. Just give me a second. Uh, I'll just call it as December um, VNet01. If there is an existing uh, name, then it should definitely uh, give a conflict. So there is no, I think I did not submit it properly. I, I might have canceled it. Okay, let's see, South India. Okay, let me mute the line. Uh, there is some background noise. Okay, let me go with uh, 172.16.0.0 slash, what do you call, uh, so we had slash 24, right? So even we can have a larger range, uh, slash uh, 16, so that uh, sorry, we'll have a larger number, 4096, let's see okay and then let's create it and then yesterday a couple of you had some interesting questions so i'll like i'll clarify that i'll add the subnet here so let's go and create the web subnet so it doesn't give you option oh okay okay so it, it uh, did we select this uh, slash 30. yes yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay okay maybe that is the reason it did throw a throw the error and it, it uh, got cancelled okay so that's fine okay so now uh, we can closely watch it because we should not create it right so ideally we should have uh, at least a minimum supported a slash 29 i don't know why microsoft is giving this option here so let's go and uh, select this uh, 512 range for my web subnet 172 16 dot zero dot zero and i can go up to 1.255 i'm just specifically doing that for a reason i'll uh, explain why okay see whatever actions that i did along with that console it did not happen see the apps network security group did not get created so i think uh, it throwed the throw an error and it created it okay i think uh, that is a good learning where uh, we selected uh, the, the range of subnet which is not supported Okay, let me go and just say app subnet. 
now i'll just give a range 172 16 2.0 and then i'll go with uh, a smaller number 256 and then i can go and create a new application network security group app nsg 01 and then i'll add it similarly i'll go and create one more subnet db subnet this range will be 172 16 3.0 i'm just going with the next range okay nothing uh, uh, tricky in that it is straightforward i'll go and select the database network security group simple so let's review and create i might have closed this option i feel okay let's wait and see even it is behaving uh, weird it, it's not showing up that review and create did we give some complex task to uh, microsoft azure portal here it it, it is showing me a blank screen here let's give it a second interesting so if i say i think it will take a little time because you are specifying everything in one chart right <laughs> one chart right okay and anyways okay let me um, yeah. do one thing let's not uh, let's not complicate uh, that much okay let's go and uh, create a new um, um, network class thing and then i'll go and create it in uh, recommended see they are recommending the above regions because these regions doesn't have a uh, lot of availability option okay i'll go with uh, something which is having a uh, lot of availability so i'll go with uh, uk okay i'll just call it as uh, okay i'll go with some new name okay uk south um, virtual network zero one okay next next delet uh, i'll have 10 range okay so i'll go and create um, uh, let me call web subnet i'll just go with 10.0.0.0 and i'll go with uh, 2000 2024 or i think 512 is okay i'll select the web security group and then add let's review and create let's not uh, give too much of a task for oh no even uh, this is not uh, working out i don't know let's refresh there is enough credit that is fine so which means we are good so i'm going to create a new network with the default range i'm not going to change anything this time let's try that this is the first time i'm seeing um, such blank screen okay so let's say uk south vnet zero one i'll select the uk south let's go with the default okay or else let's go with all the screen then uh, okay 256 is fine okay maybe i'll uh, just slightly increase it just to show one demo for uh, okay i'll just change it to web subnet i'll select the web network security group next next aha okay it doesn't open up the summary okay let me uh, re-log in okay and then um, let me reshare my screen i'll try to uh, re-log in here or else let me go to the portal.azure.com first if it if it is because of the limit it should clearly tell us like uh, there is a limit but uh, it is not telling us any limit error and even it is not getting submitted okay even if it goes uh, to a particular um, 
stage we can able to find in the logs and even we are not able to go beyond the summary screen let's see so let's try it in another way okay let me create a new vm and uh, let's see if it is allowing us to create a new vm okay even part of vm creation also you can do that correct so web uh, uk south web server one i'm going to create it in uk south london data center and i'm going to select a particular system with an operating system maybe 2019 and i'm going to select um, some smaller size here two with four combination okay i am purposefully not allowing http traffic here okay here i'll go and create a new network let's see create new i'll just call this as uk south uh, application uh, vnet 01 okay this range is fine this range is also fine okay i'll just give it as web subnet okay perfect so you have many options to go and play around okay so uh, i think we we are just seeing one more option here let's see if okay this summary is working so which means there is some issue with my um, uh, login on that particular uh, virtual network i'll re-log in later and check but let's go and create it at least now we will be able to create a vm and uh, a new virtual network along with a new subnet okay our purpose is solved okay so i i have just triggered it let's see see once the uh, activity is submitted then i can go and uh, troubleshoot it in the activity log and so on but if the task has not got submitted then there is no way of finding out what is the reason what is the error and all those stuff so in the last three cat three trigger even the screen and the submission did not happen the review and submit should have to get completed from our side to go and check the activity log okay so now let's see now we should be able to see a new virtual network let's see that uh, okay uk south okay i'm able to create it okay perfect now i've got a machine that is getting spinned up so if I want to uh, add a particular uh, role, I mean, I should have uh, done that extension along with this creation. So now, I'll, I, I, now also I can do that. I can just go and add the, I will wait for the agent to be ready. Okay, once after that, you can go and add the extension. Extension, extension add. What is that? Um, what is the option? custom script extension correct so custom script extension select this click next i've got that particular script stored in we already saw this okay if you uh, missed that particular session you can go and check that i think we stored it here only right not here one step back ah here it is okay so this is just to install the web server role ias role okay so review and create i'm just adding the custom script extension to go and install a particular role or a particular feature or you can do a lot of things using that custom script extension you can go and add additional application or tools using this option so there are a lot of ready-made tools that are available if you want to use install your own tool using some custom script you can use that custom script option so in this use case i've just added the web service role we saw this in uh, the previous week class okay previous to previous week i guess yeah so let's wait for the system to be ready i'll log into the system and then we'll uh, catch up from there okay now mm, yeah now we have got uh, two different virtual network with two different systems Now let's play around the network security group rule and then we'll go and discuss the routing uh, routing and uh, peering options today. 
okay we'll try and complete these three uh, important uh, discussion topics okay let's give it a minute i'll log into the system now okay it should be available it is running already okay i can wait for the public ip address okay c100 is now available see yesterday one of you had a doubt that whether i can have a ip address ending with zero right i'll prove that today okay let me go and log in okay what is the range that we have got for this web server okay so let's go and check that i've got this virtual network i've got how much this subnet can have ip address from 10 dot okay <laughs> only 10.5.0.0 slash 24 okay let me check i don't think we will be able to okay we have the option to increase it let me go and change it to um okay let's say slash 23 okay we can have up to two different ranges let's see if it is allows okay it is not allowing because we have already created a virtual machine in that network space okay so we will not be able to change it unless we go and disconnect that network card okay so that is another uh, tricky thing okay let's see let's do one thing let me because we already have an active vm there right i'll show you uh, in, in another example shortly okay let's go and close this now uh, we should have the web server uh, coming up okay let me do one thing let me go and create one more subnet and then see if it allows me to create a range here okay i'll call this as db subnet okay i'll go with um, okay it will not allow because it's already okay okay let's wait for this to complete okay it's succeeded okay custom script extension has got completed so we have to see the ias installation see it is there now ias has got successfully installed on the system now i can go and change the default home page just to confirm that it is coming from my uk south system okay go and edit it so this server is in uk south data center uk south web server okay just for our understanding i'm just adding some line uh, uh, words here okay let me close it so now if i go and uh, do a local uh, verification like 127 using loopback address or local host i will be able to access it locally okay 127.0.0.0 you can use any ip okay starting with 127 127.0.0.0.1 I'm able to get the local uh, web page. Even if I type localhost, it will resolve to that particular IP address. So I'm able to access it. See, this is the local uh, loopback address. I think most of you know that, right? If I say ping localhost, it will uh, ping the local, uh, what you call the loopback address. It is, I mean, I, can, I have to go and disable the IP version six so that you can see that uh, 127 number there. So if I access it from here, okay, will I be able to access it now? So if i go and enter this public ip will i be able to reach that ip address will i be able to reach that system it will not open right because we have not allow allowed http incoming traffic for that server so whenever you there is something which is getting blocked or which is not getting uh, through you have to go and check the network security group so network security group for this web system is web uh, network security group which we have here and i can just go and add the network the rule here on this particular network security group i can just go and say add inbound security group i'll just allow okay any is fine i'm just just want to allow the destination 80 rule okay i can just give this as allow http 
traffic so any number that i'm giving uh, from 100 to uh, 4000 it will have the higher precedence here okay so i'm allowing http traffic from internet if i want to allow it from only from my machine i can just change it to my ip address okay but uh, now i'll add it so i don't have to refresh here automatically when the rule is applied see i've just kept the mouse here it will automatically start refreshing um, every few seconds so now the page should automatically pop up after the uh, system after the rule is applied now let's do one thing okay automatically it has come it, it's working so let me show you one more thing so how to change the ip range so now i have an active system here i want to power this down i'll stop this okay i'll stop this ip machine okay and then once after i stop the machine i can go and detach the network card okay and once the network is detached then uh, you will be allowed to change the subnet range if there is any active machine that is there on that network then it will not allow us to change anything but yesterday i showed you right you can change the virtual network range okay only thing you will not be able to change is the um, subnet range okay virtual network you will be able to change the address space here if you want to add any address range like if you want to add uh, 10.100.0.0 slash 24 you will be able to change it okay you will be able to save it okay there should not be any problem but only thing is if you are changing the subnet range there should not be any active system connected to that subnet okay now i'll go and um, disconnect that machine from the subnet okay i'll go and uh, go to the vm go to the networking go and detach this particular network interface so i'll just attach a, a dummy network interface here i'll go and attach it in um, uh, okay i'll create a new subnet okay it's, it has got only one subnet huh? <laughs> okay let's do one thing uk web server so i should have at least one network card that is attached okay i can go and do one one, one thing here i can go to the network interface here i can uh, detach it okay so here i want to okay let's try de deleting i don't think it will allow because it is actively used here because uh, i have not detached it so i should have at least one active uh, network card in my system so what i will do is i'll create one more subnet Okay, it's everything we are learning right so that shouldn't be a problem so we can create one more subnet i will create it as web subnet 2 okay i'll give it a range like this then i'll create it so here network security group here it is i will okay i'll attach it to the new I, I don't want to attach it to anything okay even you can create a subnet without network security group also okay that is also possible so now i will go to that vm and then move that vm to the new network security group sorry new uh, subnet okay go to the vm go to networking i'll create a new network card and then i'll uh, create a new network card I'll give it the name web nick02 and then I'll select the web subnet 2 and then create. Now once after I add additional network card I'll be able to detach the primary card. Okay let's give it a second. okay let it create on the back end okay while that is happening i'll also give one more uh, important aspect around the filtering okay so when you so talk about filtering you can have virtual firewall or you can also go and have your own uh, on-premises physical firewall that can be uh, used for filtering even you can go and have 
one more category called network uh, virtual appliances or network uh, uh, appliances from marketplace i'll show you how to do that okay hopefully this is done okay it is done now so i can i have the option to detach the network interface now okay i can detach the primary network card now okay once after i detach the primary network interface card now i should be able to go and change the um, network subnet range okay it is detached now i can go to the network card here and then delete that this is the network card i will have the option to delete it now perfect it is going on okay it should work it is deleted perfect now let's go and check the ip range and let's go and try to change it so now okay interesting i have created this range okay i should have left some space in between so this is where uh, we learn all the uh, things from mistake okay so let's say it's slash 24 and slash 25 no no slash 23 will overlap with the second subnet uh, i'm messing up here okay i thought of increasing the range okay let me do one thing let me create mm -mm 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 -mm. So how do we go about it so since we have got a network interface i can just go to the virtual network i can go i should at least have one um, network card attached to the system that is the prerequisite okay so this time we can uh, carefully create the subnet see this is a real uh, scenario also right if i go and create something um, with uh, without space without uh, any in between space then i will end up uh, um, creating some range of address which is beyond that uh, uh, smaller range okay so i'll just go and say slash 25 and this is for database okay i'll just leave that save it okay so now let me go back to the virtual machine the vm here networking go and create a new network interface this will be my um, db nic 01 this selected the database network create so no worries okay i'm, I'm just trying to uh, show some um, good examples here okay you will um, you are going to learn something uh, like peering and uh, routing also now okay which is another interesting topic just give me two minutes i'll complete this okay it has completed okay done it has created it is attaching after creating the interface it is attaching now it is attaching to the system so while detaching the network interface always be careful because like sometimes we will uh, go and detach the uh, wrong interface and we will end up with a uh, problem see i have to go and select the specific network interface and detach it even in the drop down you have to select the right one okay sometimes default uh, network might get selected and we might uh, detach and delete it okay we have to be very careful in that now i have got option to go and clean up the unwanted subnet as well as extend the primary subnet okay let's go and do that let's do one thing okay without deleting the network interface let's see if it is allowing me to do that okay let's try that let's try if uh, without deleting the network interface whether it is allowing me to delete this 
no it is not allowing me right i have to definitely delete even if the network interface is not in uh, attached attached to any system it is attached to that subnet right i have an active uh, network card which is attached to that subnet so um, i have to delete this first and then only i'll be able to delete that subnet okay so when you are creating something the other way around when you want to clean up that you need to clear the dependency okay that is what we are learning here okay so i will just go and delete this thing now it will work okay now i'll also go and okay always wait for this uh, submission to complete so if you are uh, jumping from one screen to another screen just wait for the deployment to start here okay now it is successfully deleted fine now i can go and change the range i'll just change it to slash 23 so that i get 500 ip addresses let me save it okay beautiful now i can have ip range from how much from 10.5.5.0 uh, up to oh no no not this this one i can have ip range from 10.5.0.0 up to 10.5.1.255 i have a very large range so i want to prove something here okay so let me go and create a new network card i'll call this as network class 01 web nick 01 this is for my uh, uk south web right so uk south web server nick 01 so i'll select the region correctly uk south i'll select the correct subnet web subnet here i am going to give the static ip address 10. Dot pi dot 1.0 let's see see it has accepted so the ip address can end with zero i'll go and select the uh, security group network security group and review and create it see i've given an ip address which is ending with zero maybe most of you might have been thinking that uh, ip address cannot end with zero it can end with zero okay that is what i want to show you here so if you are having a larger range which overlaps more than a small 256 subnet for example in our case you have created 10.5.5.0 slash 23 right which means you can have an ip address of 512 ip addresses so 512 means you will have 10.5.0.0 up to 10.5.0.255 ip address in the first range and i'll also have one more range which is 10.5.1.0 to 10.5.1.255 this is also 256 addresses so uh, many no, people have the 5.5.0 and uh, 6.0 is it okay okay no no maybe um, uh, you might have seen it in the wrong one okay this is the right thing oh, okay okay here oh no, no 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 okay you are right here in this example i typed it wrong yeah so it is 10.5.0.0 and this is the range here right so which means many of you might be thinking that every range the first address is network id it is not the case in this range it is only 10.5.0.0 is the network id and then 10.5.1.255 is the broadcast id or broadcast ip okay anything in between you can use it for your system okay that is what you need to understand even you can use this ip address even you can use this ip address okay it is a larger range okay now let's go and check the system go to the resource and i'm going to attach this uh, network uh, i mean attach this uh, thing to my system where exactly i can do that i can go to my virtual machine I can go to this vm i can go and attach that network interface which we have created okay uk server web server one attach it now i have got Two network card one in the web range and one in database range that is all fine okay that's okay so if you want to remove the un unnecessary database nick card you can remove it now once after i attach the primary card so i can go and detach the unnecessary card okay perfect we are done now my machine has got only one ip address which is 10.5.1.0 
right so cool okay let me go and power it on okay now i've got one server which is sitting in where which is sitting in australia and i've got one server sitting in uk and there are another server like uh, that is there in uh, west us okay there are many different servers sitting in different uh, geographical location for example i want one of my system to talk to one of the system in us or one of the system in uh, australia okay by default communication between virtual network will not be there okay you need to go and connect that by creating a route or you need to create a peering to establish the connection okay i'll show you how to do that now okay just a second okay let's go inside the machine now and check the ip address Okay, I have to wait for the IP address to come. Okay, it has started the VM. Successfully, it has come. My screen is not getting refreshed. Maybe there is a lot of uh, network transaction going on. Okay, if I go here, it should be okay. I will be able to pick it up quickly. Oh, did we disable the public IP address? Okay, interesting. So I have not had the public IP address. Maybe I have to go to this network card and attach the public IP address here. So how do I do that? I have to go to IP configuration and I have to enable the public IP address. Go to this IP config and I have to associate the public address so I can attach the previous one, save. So because we created a new network card and we did not attach it to the public IP address, we just created only, okay? We have to attach it to a public IP address. Otherwise it will not have a public IP. That is another thing you need to understand. Okay, so let's wait for this to complete. The more you practice, the more you understand all these things and you can answer all these questions in a confident way. Okay, let this get submitted. This is saving. So what we have done, we have add attached the public IP for our network card so that I can reach the system both using public IP and the private IP, perfect. Now I've got the public IP here. I can just go and connect to it. So that's the reason it did not show the public IP. I thought uh, it is taking time to refresh, but then I did not have the public IP attached to the network card. So now I've got the public IP to which I can connect. Will that uh, particular web page work from my system? Any answer? I think yes, then because we enabled yeah, already. Right? Yeah, we attach the same network security group, so it should work. Yeah, that is right. So if you look at here, my IP address is 10.5.1.0. It can end with zero. So even if I say ping 10.5.1.0, it will work. Okay, perfect. So that is all fine. Okay, now we have uh, a system in uh, where? This is in London. And I have a system in, uh, let's say, uh, this is in uh, US. I don't. I want to connect these two systems uh, between each other. Okay, so maybe let's take a small break now. And then when we come back, we will see how to route the traffic to the system and also how to do a pairing between uh, two different complete network. So we'll uh, discuss those things after the break. Okay, any questions before I uh, trigger the break? Yes, Stan, uh, your video yeah. is a little bit uh, displaying late than your wife. Let me stop the recording. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now we 